Hello and welcome back to Video Games with your host, Tim Rogers, on Kotaku.com. Today we're taking it all the way back to the year 1998. October 21st, 1998 was the release of the video game that we currently, to this day, still know as Medieval for the PlayStation 1. Came out on October 21st, 1998. That was the day after Xenogears also came out on the Sony PlayStation 1 on, on the goddarned uh, 20th of October. I know because I worked at a Target at this time, and I was always kind of creeping around back in the electronics area d between uh, doing my job duties, which sometimes involved creeping around back there. And uh, it was also, Medieval came out the same day as God Darn Metal Gear Solid, which is, uh, to say that not a whole lot of people know this God Darn game, well, they know this game, because the PlayStation, obviously, to have three releases like this within... Uh, the, 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 the span of 24 hours kind of tells you that the god darn thing was, uh, it was the real deal, right? The god darn thing was the real deal. The PlayStation had games just on top of games, on top of games, on top of games. And the fact that these three came out all at the same time, there was just too much god darn video game. You think there's too much video game in the year 2019? Come on. There was too much video game back in 1998 to the point where this little boy known as Medieval this little one right here, this happy little child known as Medieval on the got darn Sony PlayStation, it just, uh, with an unfortunateness, it just straight up wasn't played by quite as many people as uh, the, uh, the uh, slightly, uh, slightly bigger video game that came out like a day on the same day. So it, it kind of was like this. It's kind of what it was like. This is kind of a visual representation of what that day in 1998 was like. Um, are you enjoying my, my lecture skills here? I actually purchased Xenogears and Metal Gear Solid both, which you will find this interesting. They were, and I know in a previous stream just a couple weeks ago, I talked about how I played Final Fantasy III when it first came out, and it cost me 79 goddarn 99 at the goddarn Electronics Boutique, and that was a, a heck load of money for a young truck such as myself to uh, load up into the, the, the bed in the back. I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, however, these games, interestingly enough, both Xenogears and Metal Gear Solid launched for a retail price of $39.99 on the Sony PlayStation. There was a time, briefly, during the early Sony PlayStation, or, well, I don't know if it was really early, though during that late 90s uh, where... Sony PlayStation games generally released for thirty nine ninety nine, and at Target, God darn Xenogears was actually thirty four ninety nine, because uh, whoever was in charge of programming the inventory computer just kind of had no faith in Xenogears as a game that anybody in their right mind would want to play, you know. So that's just kind of the wild wilderness that went on with these games, and Medieval was just all the while kind of creeping around back here, being like, ugh. Uh, and it was like, so Medieval had, had a, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I took one look at Medieval. It was on a demo kiosk in the, in the, the electronic section of my target. I took one look at it. And, uh, I was just like, yeah, this is all right. This is, this is okay. And I, I, I dinked around in it. That's the expression I would use. I got darn dinked around, you know? Ah, uh, delicious coffee. How'd you like my acting skills there about the coffee being delicious? So I, I dinked around in Medieval. I thought it was all right. And then I never, I didn't really play it. Until. Is that enough suspense? Until November 26th, 1998. A Thursday. And I know it was a Thursday because that was Thanksgiving. And I know that it was Thanksgiving and it was the 26th and it was Thursday because on that Monday unusually, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time came out. So so it was that after all this preamble in which I say that I bought Metal Gear Solid and Xenogears both at full price, played through both of them in about a month, and let me tell you, 
what a time to be alive that was. And I say that not even facetiously. I was, I was a, a late teenager and I was uh, associating with friends and playing video games that were cool. And I had friends who were playing Xenogears and Metal Gear Solid. It was like after high school, it was like God darn sweet relief. It was just, you know, drinking straight from the garden hose of life's goodness at that point. And then you've got Ocarina of Time coming up. And uh, I bought Ocarina of Time. I did my God darn civic duty uh, for a for a 19-year-old video game fan in 1998, purchasing Ocarina of Time on day one was pretty much the same God darn thing as voting uh, in an important presidential election. And everybody should vote. And I voted in every single election I've ever had an opportunity to vote in. I'm proud to say that. I voted... Also for Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, I did not vote for Medieval. Medieval was still creeping around back there. So here's what happened. Ocarina of Time came out on a god darn Monday. On a god darn Monday, right? Which me no understand, first of all. First of all, just me no understand why it came out on a Monday. Because clearly if you're a school-going child person, teenager, you're going to you know, you're going to basically you get off the, the Friday before Thanksgiving and then you get like the whole week because it was college. So it's like Friday. I didn't even have a class scheduled after uh, noon on Friday because I, I had like a 7 a.m. lecture that I had to go to. And I got out of there and I beelined to the God darn Target store in Indianapolis from Bloomington, Indiana. I drove my Plymouth Sundance, picked up Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Or no, and I went back home, and uh, the idea would have been like I had this ideal in my head. It's like why can't they release the game on Friday? Because then I would get it on Friday and play it all weekend. I didn't. I got it on Monday because it came out on Monday, and that's why I remember that it came out on a Monday. And I remember being like feeling like the goddamn world was unfair. I just binged through Zeno Gears and Metal Gear Solid, playing through Metal Gear Solid, goddamn multiple times, like a million billion times. I had played through Metal Gear Solid. And loved it, obviously, because I'm a big boy and I know what I'm doing. So I, um, it, it, it's like, and then I'm just sitting there, like, all upset that I'm not getting to play Ocarina of Time during the weekend. I'm like, why's it got to come out on a Monday? Does everybody remember? Came out on a Monday. Come on. Why'd they put it on a goddamn Monday? So, and it's like, I've got the whole uh, Friday afternoon, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, just completely wide open. I ended up getting Ocarina of Time on Monday. However, I went and visited a friend, a, a, a lady friend, on that Monday instead of playing Zelda. I had Zelda in a plastic bag in the back of my goddamn car the whole time. Nobody tried to steal it. I covered it with a, with a flannel shirt, I believe. It was a green one. Anyway, Thursday rolled around. I thought I'm going to get to play this game quality time style on Thanksgiving Day. And it turned out, that fate had other ideas, which was my big brother, who had given up on video games. What because video games are for children? It was a, it wasn't easy, to be a, a Midwestern teenager in the nineteen uh, nineties, late nineteen nineties. There weren't a lot of schemes. There weren't a lot of things to get involved in, and my brother. One of the things that he didn't have anything to feel oppressed about, so he uh, basically expressed uh, his dramatic aptitude via proclaiming himself too old for video games just too old for he was too old for god darn video games you know and he's like he would see me playing video games put his hands on his hips be like this is dumb and it's like even metal gear solid was not enough to blow his mind to sway him into the belief that video games had grown up he saw metal gear solid and he was like yeah i don't know man the reason he didn't like metal gear solid was that it had the top down camera angle so he made a, a dramatic point of purchasing Medieval and playing it on his, his girlfriend's PlayStation. And then he brought it over as like a bonding activity. He comes in. I am, uh, I am actually, I was dinking around in Metal Gear Solid on Thanksgiving Day, despite owning Zelda Ocarina of Time. I was, I was like speed running Metal Gear Solid. I was, I was like, bonkering through it I got very very optimal at my Metal Gear Solid playthrough time and it was just like my my favorite game at the moment and it was like I'm not going to play Zelda until I can really sit down with it and my brother comes in and he's like what are you playing this for and I'm like oh it's just Metal Gear Solid man and he's like oh you want to play Medieval and I was like what really and then he's like yeah you want to play Medieval and I'm like oh 
yeah, we could play that, or we could play this new Zelda. And I, I show him the Zelda, and he's just like, he looks at the back of the box of Ocarina of Time, and he goes, nah, man, come on, let's play Medieval. And it's like, man, okay. So we put in Medieval, and he put in his memory card, and he loaded up a save, and... And we just, we played the whole game. So I've actually never played the beginning of Medieval. We we just like blasted through from wherever he was in the game all the way through. And I was like, how how is this the game that got my brother back into his dramatic re-entrance into video games from which he would exit again shortly only to come back for the exact length of time it took him to purchase an Xbox and Halo Combat Evolved and beat Halo on the campaign on easy mode and then give me his Xbox because he was too cool and too grown up for video games. And right now my big brother has grown up into this sort of church-going Midwestern individual, not to dis- to dis- disparage the concept of going to church. If you like going to church, it's good. Uh, that's great. It's good. Um, my brother, he uh, he's the kind of guy who only goes to see every single Marvel movie two or three times because his son wants to. So it's it's like that, you know. My son loves Captain America. They're the kind of grown up American family, uh, who uh, doesn't go see the new Star Wars movies anymore because the seventh one. Uh, I don't get it. I don't get it. I thought that Kylo Ren was going to be the good guy. His son had bought a whole bunch of Kylo Ren toys. So my brother's interesting. That's my big brother, not my little brother. My little brother's different. Um, not to you know call out my brothers here. So it's uh. I just remember blasting through Medieval with my big brother on Thanksgiving Day. And I just remember my first impression of it was, this is like, I could imagine in my head uh, a British man uh, being like, Tim Burton's brilliant, mate. Tim Burton's brilliant, mate. I could just imagine that. That's the kind of... And then it turns out, I didn't know at the time because you know I didn't have a, a rectangle in my pocket that could dial up Wikipedia at any goddamn second of the day. So I, I you know... I didn't know that it was actually made by British people. So I had this impression that it was it was a British thing. And now, thanks to my friends at Other Ocean Interactive Entertainment Electronic Studios in Emeryville, California, Medieval, as it is known by its fans, is back on the PlayStation 4. And uh, it... Uh, it's in 4K, and uh, what the heck, huh? We gonna play the garbage out of this? I say we light this up and we see what the what the stuff is all about. So I'll see you all in a moment from the cozy confines of my chair, which is right over there. Um, I have to take the headphones off to get over there, else my shoes, this carpet, my jacket, nylon, nylon, and polyester conspire to shock my ears and hurt me so I'm, I'm gonna I'll be over there in about 30 seconds I don't need to tell you everything I'm doing hold on Welcome back to video games, my goblins, my sweet, sweet goblins. Oh man, removal of Facebook integration and the messages up there. You will notice that that is the app icon for the video game Death Stranding over there. Yep, that's what it looks like. As per Sony's PR's email on October 14th, 2019, as of 2016, uh, to October 16th, 2019, I'm allowed to tweet a photo of the app icon on the homepage. That's it, though. That's all I'm allowed to do. Uh, we will not talk about Death Stranding. We will, however, play Medieval, as I kept calling it, to my brother's great disdain, because he took this game hyper-seriously. And, I mean, it... it it was good. And I remember playing the game and just being like, I haven't touched it since Thanksgiving 1998. November 26th, 1998. Have not touched this game. And, uh... I'm, I assume I'm gonna like it. Like, whatever. Whatever. 
In a time long ago, Ooh. in the kingdom of Galomir, a sorcerer named... Okay, okay, give me that sorcerer. This arrogant, pitiless man hated his fellow citizens for their simple and peaceful ways. Oh, crikey, he's a real gamer, this guy. The gamer sorcerer Zarok, hating his fellow citizens for their their consoles, when uh, and and so he raises an army of his PC graphics card. That's what I'm getting from all this. It's a it's a real goddamn uh, sort of metaphor. Deep into the accursed multitude. Someone in the chat is expressing the opinion that medieval is good. It is good. It is. I mean, I'm not. I'm not making it up. You know. I'm not I'm not joking when I say I like it. I, I like this game. It's good, clean, simple, straightforward 3D action gameplay that at its time expressed really, really good 3D graphics that were hyper legible, uh, hyper fluid, nice movement. Everything looked good and was clear and impressive and technical. However, it it just it didn't have the same stuff as a couple of the other games that were coming out around that same time. For example, Metal Gear Solid, which had the hyper dense Hollywood presentation or ocarina of time which had this super super wildly completely dense massive giant door busting god darn watershed gate breaking moment of just an extreme amount of stuff in a big boy world it's a kind of adventure trample around in this was just a straightforward action game in the in the flavor of your spyros and your uh, all those other ones at that time Oh, yeah. Okay, give me some of that 4K. Give me some of that 4K. Uh, I'm seeing it in 4K. You all, unfortunately, you're not seeing it in 4K. I'm sorry that you can't see it in 4K because we're streaming it in 1080. Nobody can stream in 4K without... You gotta have some of those government narc computers to stream in 4K. Nobody who can stream in 4K is a person you should trust. Oh, there's the king of the game lords. Ah. Green eyes. Some people think green eyes are bad. I think people with green eyes are okay. Shout me out in the chat if you think green eyes are okay. When you don't have to if you don't want to. Look at this guy. His big old trident pitchfork sort of staff. Guy's got darn wild. Mike Micah is in the chat. I see you in there, Mike Micah. Mike Micah has green eyes. Mike Micah, one of the, uh, what is, what was your, I, I don't want to like misquote, misstate somebody's role on a game. Mike Micah, were you the, uh, were you the head honcho on this? Let me know if you were. How did you get all of the 4Ks in there? That's, did you, are you the one responsible for the 4K being in the game? He was the head honcho, that's good. So we've got Mike Micah from Emeryville Zone, Other Ocean. Full disclosure, I've received a few paychecks from them in the past. Uh, unfortunately, the paychecks I received from Other Ocean were not substantial enough to fix my entire life. And I continue to suffer to this day. No, no amount of money yet has fixed my life or my self-esteem. So yeah, full disclosure, I, I quote unquote as far as the, as far as the absolute psychopaths in my Twitter DM inbox who hate on every single thing I do are concerned. Yes, I did quote unquote work for the developer of this game at a point in time. So just letting you know that. Oh my god, I love it. This sorcerer guy sucks. He's just out there ripping stuff up. I can't wait to go back to the Bay Area for a little bit just to have myself a relax there. You know, not like a huge relax, but a, a, a reasonable relax. All these little gremlins. So that I can have myself a an Americano and a and an omelet at the Doyle Street Cafe. Everybody hang out with the Doyle Street Cafe if you're over there. I feel like that music's a little bit loud. Is that music loud? Do they ask about me at Doyle Street Cafe, Mike Micah? Do they ever do they ever yell? Where's that goddamn guy? Where's that god darn guy? You all got an Ike's sandwich shop near there. Wait a minute, there's 60 frames per second in this god darn game. Medieval? I kept calling the game Medieval and my brother kept being like, it's medieval, man. 
And I'm like, oh, it looks like it says medi medieval, though. And he's like, come on, man. It was really, really a, a source of amusement for me. That uh, amusement, which I, I exploited to the fullest for a period of around eight hours during which we played this whole thing. Oh my god, the menu is even good. And I can use the D-pad. I appreciate it when a game lets me use the goddamn D-pad. I don't like when I can't use the, uh, use the, the D-pad. That skeleton is, uh, he would make a heck of a god darn Jeet Kune Do fighter because his shoulders do not at all betray the activities of his hands. You would have to really have some sort of masterful peripheral perception to detect an incoming right hook from this god darn guy because he is just rock steady fainting entirely with his head. You do not want to get in a fight with this god darn skeleton. You do not. I like how I have to press down to move the cursor down. It doesn't wrap. Because that wouldn't make it feel as tactile. I have to press up to go up, down to go down. When I'm down, I can't press down to wrap around. I like that. That's the sort of thing that I like. It's a little tiny touch because it makes me feel like I'm actually not just picking new gamer options, that I am moving the skeleton's hand. And here's a menu. Okay. So, we haven't yet played the game, everyone, if you're just tuning in. Oh my god, why why is Bulgarian in your game? That's fantastic. Uh, that's, uh, I love it. I kind of want to play the game in Bulgarian. You can tell, that's, that's incredible. <laughs> Let's go ahead and just, uh, just play the game in English for everyone else's sake. Fortesque is the name of my guy. It's, uh, is that cousin? No, not cousin it. Uh, whatever his name is. The Hand from the Adams Family. This game is like Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas's Adams Family. The, the movie, the video game, uh, the prequel set in medieval times. So it is medieval times. Cousin Thing, is that his name? I know it's not Cousin Thing. It's Cousin It, Uncle Fester, and Thing. What is Thing's deal? It's the thing is just a hand? There's a new Adams Family movie coming out, right? Do you ever watch that uh do you ever wanna like like I'm a I'm a huge proponent of punch up in a script. I'm a huge propo proponent of 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 flavoring up some dialogue, of making sure that every line is like at least a little bit punchy. I mean, if you ask me, uh the god darn, you know, the last uh there's like a 10 minute sequence at the end of David Mamet's film Heist that I consider the optimum level of punch up possible for a movie. However, if you ever go back and watch Adam's Family Values, the second Adam's Family movie, it is punched up so hard it's basically a Shoryuken. It is like, it is just really, really wildly way too punched up. Every line is like a god darn one liner from like a joke book you would find on a restaurant bathroom in like 1984. It's like, except all original, new material. Nobody can say anything in that movie without sounding clever. And it's, uh, quite frankly obnoxious. As a person who accidentally says clever things every once in a while, and apologizes appropriately when doing so. I gotta say that Adam's Family Values kinda, kinda really just trips my pet peeve, and it, it gets me feeling creepy crawly. Just a little bit in terms of its, uh, linguistic ostentatiousness, and its jocular bodaciousness. Anyway, we still haven't gotten into the game yet. I'm enjoying this Sir Daniel Fortesca uh, talking to a door. And he's missing an eye. That's a reference to the fact that televisions are flat screens and require no depth perception to appreciate 3D. Oh, and we have... There are 60 frames happening here. Walk up to a book, press Triangulo to read it. Hi, it's me, Sir Daniel Triangulo. To leave this script. You'll find an exit at the end of the hall. All right, I'll, I'll go ahead and take a look at an exit. I took my arm off. I threw my arm. Give me that back. Uh, I don't want to take my arm off. Life bottle. That's good because you're gonna need to drink those. Give me that book. Find life bottles throughout Galamere. Galamere's a good name for a for like a town. It's just giving us a little Halloween flavor. We're just putting a little bit of Halloween here in the Goblin Bunker. You don't really have to try too hard to make the Goblin Bunker feel like Halloween because anyone who's been here, they basically find the experience indistinguishable from a haunted house. When they're asked like what their favorite haunted hayride that they've ever been on was, 
uh, or if they've ever been to an escape room or whatever, they, like what the best one was, they'll they'll all mention the Goblin Bunker, and then they'll go, oh wait, that was actually a video game stream place in an office. It's pretty much an escape room in here, and in order to get out, I don't need a new lease on life. I'm month to month on my <laughs> life, if you know what I mean. Let it alone. Fate what? has given it a second chance. Wait, it has given what a second chance? To forget the Look at this guy coming straight off of some, like, Diablo box art from, like, Walt Disney's Diablo. We hopes it does well. We hopes? We hopes? Are you, uh, are you one of the river folk? Like, what's going on? Ooh, give me that treasure. I wish I could put me arm back in. Oh my god. He just walks up to treasure chests and joylessly osmoses their contents. God, I love how fast the camera movement is. Why are there 60 frames? Did you guys not think there were too many? Uh, was is 60 frames? I mean, do you really have to put that many in the game? Because 30 is enough. How did you like my acting skills? Uh, I was portraying uh, a liar, which is that's what a liar would say, is that 30 frames is enough. Give me this. I kick that box, it opens up. I reach inside, I take the stuff. I have throwing daggers now. And my arm is back on me body. I don't know how to use the throwing daggers. Oh, press X to jump. If I play a video game and, and I can't press X to jump, I start immediately like throwing elbows here in this real world. What's that? Copper shield, give me that. I got a small sword, toggle weapons, throwing knife, and then big boy style sword. Let me read that book. During your travels through Galamir, mm -hmm. you will collect many items. To see your items or to use one. Again, if I'm playing a video game and I can't collect many items, I'm just gonna straight up get infuriated. Of Galamir, which will keep a record of the denizens you've encountered and bestow you with keen insights. Mike Micah says that the game was originally 120 frames per second. Don't lie to me about no 120 frames per second. Don't even joke about it. I need 120 frames per second. Oh, here we go. Uh, bestiary. An arm. Excellent. Can I have this, please? That's my star rune. It's gonna let me get out of here. This guy's just kind of running wild and just slashing with his sword. All right, let's get out of here. Let's get up these steps. Very, very smooth video game. It's going down easy, like a goddamn diet Dr. Pepper on the on a hot bus on a late night after work. You know, you ever have one of those? Hot, hot, delicious. Uh, wait, no. The the Dr. Pepper would be cold. There's just very few video games that are smooth, like a good beverage. We're uh, out of Dan's crypt, and here we are. Good old level one. You know what game reminded me of this? Not a game that this reminds me of. It's kind of doing a sort of a sort of a yin yang dance of reminding and reminding of. Uh, is is that Maximo? You know Maximo. One of those games that I struggle with terms such as this usually. Though I would say it was underrated, underappreciated, under talk it about. You ever play that? Maximo's uh, Maximo's hot and sweet. And whoever doesn't like Maximo is, uh, is brutally a weirdo, IMO. Oh my crikey. The monsters come at ya. Oh man, I, I literally just instinctively clicked the, uh, clicked the, the right analog stick to try to lock on to that guy. That was pretty good. That's where I'm at with video games in the year 2019. I developed the habit to... Light following you around. Can, can I... A wisp. Yeah, it's a wisp? I was telling a story. To intervene in mortal affairs. But okay. I heard that Sir Daniel Fortescue had a shot at redemption... Ah, oh, the depth perception. They decided to give you a hand with your depth perception. Talk about hand-eye coordination, am I right? ...you direct your ranged attacks. But he'll also let you know what things might merit. I'm having problems with my own depth perception these days. With my goddamn retinal inflammation or a optic nerve inflammation in my left eye. It sucks. The inflammation has gone down, though, 
the uh, neuro ophthalmologist uh, says that there's still like remnants of swelling. So I got like a little weird, like the, the prescription is different in each eye in a way that's not fun. Let me tell you, it's not fun. Ooh, Earth Rune. Is this RuneScape? Anyway, yeah, um, I got the goddamn habits in me where it's like I insist on if a game has running and jumping. Like a Mario, I need to be able to play Mario with the, uh, the Y button angled uh, at, a, at a way so I can hold it down. So I need to be able to have the run button up and to the left of the jump button or I refuse to play Mario. If I can't remap the controls on the Nintendo Switch, uh, online, Super Mario Brothers 3, for the NES, I just get straight up livid. Sometimes it so I've got all those habits. And those are old habits, right? They're old ones that I've had for a very long time. Very old time. Uh, and now, you know, you'd think that old dogs and new tricks and whatever, you can't learn one. Though, man, god darn, Demon Souls, as early as 10 years ago, gave unto me this tendency to just... It's become one of those classic gamer behaviors in me where I, I click the right analog stick expecting to log to lock onto someone. It's the only thing I don't mind doing with the right analog stick. I think all of their actions involving the right analog stick should uh, should be on a button. I think you should have rear paddles on your controller. I'm playing this game with a scuff vantage. Uh, I accidentally used some magic. Playing this game with the scuff vantage, which means uh, usually you have to get at least a certain degree into a game before you decide what it is you want to map to the paddles. Though I haven't decided what I want to put on the paddles yet. I haven't decided where the heck I'm trying to go in this level. This kind of reminds me of the Nightmare Before Christmas zone in Kingdom Hearts. Anybody play that? Oh, give me this. Has anybody here played Kingdom Hearts? It's like the Nightmare Before Christmas Zone in Kingdom Hearts, except a lot better. And, uh, technically from a game that came out reasonably before Kingdom Hearts did. This game was a very impressive looking game on the PlayStation 1. And, uh, this re remake, it's not a remaster, it's a remake. This remake is an impressive looking game on the PlayStation 4, so... I mean, I'm, I haven't played enough of it to assess the aging of its game design, though I'm pretty sure it's pretty sure it's got a little bit left over from the old days in a way that uh, an idiot jerk like me is going to go as far out of his way as possible to appreciate adequately. What's up, my friends? Oh, I entered Dan Cam. I didn't want to do that. I just want to lock on to these chumps. I want to be in Dan. I want to fight in this this camera mode. I didn't mean to actually get hit a whole lot there. Don't let zombies get you down. Ten. Oh yeah, I'll step into this fountain of rejuvenation. Oh, that sweet green smoke. That sweet bubbly mist. Come and get me, you chumps. I just love to kill. You know what I mean? I don't care if something's already dead. I just love killing. The object here is the chalice. Okay, I'm gonna get that chalice. Dispatch an enemy with a soul. The chalice fills a little more. Fill the chalice. I'm gonna fill the chalice. If only I could fill the chalice by relieving myself. Got a little 85% up there. I hate those little arms, those little cousin thing hands. Wilding out. I'm going to keep calling those little hands cousin things so that I'll get YouTube comments on the archive of this correcting me for him just being called thing. I want everybody to know that when I called him cousin it earlier, I actually, I knew that it was called thing, okay? 89% we got. Who's next? 1998 this game came out, the era of... The heyday of Duke Nukem. Well, the heyday of Duke Nukem's, uh... Duke Nukem's holy ethos. Oh, the chalice can now be collected. 
give me that chalice. Fill my chalice with Mountain Dew Baja Blast. Zero sugar Mountain Dew Baja Blast, because I don't mess with the... I don't mess with that that sweet stuff. I want it to taste... If I'm going to drink something that's a god darn invented flavor, I'm going to drink it and make sure that it is... Uh, just the most unholy variety possible. Give me them artificial sweetos. Give me that chalice, bro. The object hit. Yeah, I want it. Oh, it can be collected. That doesn't mean it should be collected, I see. Wait, what? I never played the beginning of this game. Like I said, I only ever played from a reasonable distance in. I need some kind of a key of a sort to get in there? I want to get in the chalice. I need to get the chalice. God, my head hurts. Anybody got a headache? I don't know how to get the chalice. Got somebody in the chat asking if I've ever filled an entire... Uh, Bathtub with uh, Diet Dr. Pepper. Regular or diet? Yeah, diet. Uh, it's actually called Dr. Pepper Diet now because all the brands in unison decided to put the the, the recognizable name up front and then the uh, the variety name at the end. It's how Coke Cherry Coke became Coca-Cola Cherry. We live in scumbag country now, let me tell you. Scumbag country is both a place and a time. I mean, the world has been bad pretty much since god darn forever ago. And some of this stuff was worse back then than any of the stuff is now. Having said that, it makes one feel all scorpion skittery a skeezy with creepy crawly goose pimples and, and whatnot to think of the conversations being had by stone-faced dead-eyed individuals in the boardrooms behind the brands. Thinking back on 1998 then uh, fills one with a memory of relative quaintness. That Duke Nukem ethos. Oh, I just... I thought I was dead. I thought I was already dead, but I died again. Feel free to have a paddle in the shallow water, but don't be tempted to go for a swim. Buoyancy can be a problem for those of a dead disposition. <laughs> good line. That was a good line. I like that. Buoyancy can be a problem for those of a dead disposition. Well, question then, how me get? Uh, that is door, how me get. That's all I need to know. Good graphics. Uh, Mike, Mikey, could you let us know in the chat? Does this have HDR in it? Let me know. Just let me know in the chat. And if the HDR is in there, how god darn sweet is it? I need to know if it's a Baja Blast or a Zero Sugar Baja Blast. One of those is sweeter than the other. I don't know where I'm going. I know I have to go in here. I need the chalice. I don't know how to collect the god darn chalice. do not know how to get the chalice. It's right there. And it's behind some fence that looks like it would pose no threat for my dude's sword. Yet I cannot get in there. I cannot grab. Mino can grab. How do I grab? I don't know how to do it. I feel like I could do it. I did read the book. The book just says, get the chalice. Every time. Someone's saying leap off the book over the fence. That would be the most, like, 1980s British game design method. Just can't do it. Fence is a god darn... I can't believe I got this hopelessly stuck on the very first level of this game. I just remember this game being a chill game that we just blasted through. I don't know what to do. I can't believe I'm getting owned by medieval. 
medieval is going medieval on me. Wait, what's up here? Shop goods? Oh, you punks. Love this honky-tonk Halloween town, big boy bingo kind of music going on. Oh, this tune is sweet. Yeah, I'm loving it. Yeah, this song's getting me going. What's your favorite shop music in a video game? Let me know in the chat. I like the I like the shop music in Monster Boy. I think that's the best. Persona, King of Shop Music's IMO. Listen to this Halloween music going on. I don't know what to do. I I am just completely incapable of thinking of what to do. I don't understand why. I mean, I'm I, I'm used to playing video games these days that just talk at you, tell you what to do all the time. Games that just kind of push you around a bit, you know? And say you're going to do the job, you're going to do the thing. This neb nebulous labyrinthine quality happening here. That's the way down. A little bit of sameness. Yet a quaint sameness it brings back memories of the old days. Don't know how to get in that door. Don't know how to get the chalice. Someone please. Oh, I guess the Zelda shop music where you put on a 10. Uh... Where the god darn. Uh... Uh, what's it called? Ah. Okay, give me that. Hall of Heroes awaits. I had to hit the statue. I want that door over there to open. Is that true? Let's see what's down here. Attack the god darn statue. You excuse yourself, bro. Just sprinting and flailing. The midi evil version of praying and spraying. Well, I did it. I obtained some treasure. I am now just pulled kicking and screaming by the ankles. My teeth ripping long lines in the dust by the whole notion of old video games where you just gotta hit things that look like stuff until they do stuff for you. I'm back and I'm ready to love it. These games impress upon you these hyper-specific little pathological fastidiousnesses. Hit things with a sword and maybe something happens. I'm gonna be strutting around this whole zone figuratively and literally in both life and game hitting stuff bonking the hog give me that life spring it's the life stream like in Final Fantasy 7 it's even the same color okay so my bingo only has room for one more chip one more ball from the old machine How's it going to go and what's it going to be? Do I jump across here or is that ticket to me die? Do I, like, what do I do? Sir Dan here doesn't really have a whole lot of hops. He's not NBA material. He doesn't, he jumps sort of high. In in video games, the character is, is, is vertical propulsively challenged if they cannot jump at least one full height of their body. If they're feet can't reach the vertical distance of the top of their head. We consider them to be a low jumper. Somebody like little Mario can jump what? 
eight times his own height. I mean, that's, uh, that's stupendous. If I could jump 48 feet into the air, I'd be... Wait, I just multiplied... Yeah. If I could jump 48 feet into the air, I'd be god darn rich, you know? Mario instead, he's just dinking around like a god darn plumber. What do I do now? Tell me what to do, please. Cross the bridge? My bingo is filling up. As you were all pointing out, it's too much bingo, not enough god darn daddy. What do I do? Somebody tell me what to do, please, God. Cross the bridge? That bridge, the bridge that is impartial and incomplete? I mean partial and incomplete? Or am I mistaken on you? Is this what you mean by the bridge? Oh. I don't know, man. My little death in the goddamn water made me feel all squirmy and squiggly about that. I thought I was going to die. Somebody says jump off a ledge from down another path onto the bridge. I did it. I'm in the Hall of Heroes. Or maybe I'm not. You ever get like a loading screen tooltip and, you know, you ever get fooled by loading screen tooltips in the year 2019? I am actually am in the Hall of Heroes, where it would be like telling you about a location, and then you're like, that's where I am? And it's like, no, it was just telling you about a location. Arm wrestling. you may be able to persuade them to give you a new weapon. I need a new weapon already? I've barely murdered anybody with this one. Give me that book. Homage, I thought it was pronounced homage. Shout me out in the chat. Somebody tell me how to really pronounce that, because I don't understand. Uh. Man, don't tell me to pay no homage to somebody. That's weird. I don't want to talk to you. It's me, Canny Tim. Does the battle go well? No. He can't talk because he has no bottom jaw, I take it. But hold. His voice is issuing forth from the bone holes of a calcium individual. Strutting and waddling around, all bones a goggle, absent one eye globe. Not that there's anything clever about shooting someone in the eye, sir. Of all the fleshy portions to preserve of one's body, it is with good fortune that he keeps one eye. You would imagine he would have another part. Like if it's a straight up lottery in terms of body volume. He lucked out to get to keep one of his eyes. When you have paid homage to all of the heroes in the lower hall, the ghostly stairs will... When you've paid homage to all of the heroes in the lower hall, the ghostly stairs will then become solid. Back again on the day this game came out, it was impossible to use the word solid without evoking Metal Gear Solid. That's kind of a... Again, I like this sort of labyrinthine dream logic that's happening, which is... Uh, I have to pay homage to the heroes in order to make the stairs become solid. It's like it can't just be like jump into a painting or collect a puzzle piece. And once again, I've had my bingo broken. Daddy's bingo's broken. Someone broke it off. They snapped off my bingo. I don't know what to do now. Me leave, me stay, what I do. Someone tell me. I have not the patience today. Pay some homage, but to who? To whom? Does yonder knight Daniel Fortescue? Can I chalice you, bro? Oh, wait. Cups? Ah, oh, me hungry for more fun. However, right now, I feel like I have to go buy fun groceries in order to eat the more fun. Can I go out this door? No? Pay homage? 
I want to pay homage. Oh, blast me. Oh, leave the Hall of Heroes. I feel like the Hall of Heroes is the sort of place that it's just rude to ever leave once you're there. How do I pay homage? I'm serious. I'm not joking with anyone here. Like, what do I do to pay homage? See, I have this notion in mind where I would rehearse these streams before doing them, though I feel like maybe it's better to do it like this. You get the more organic experience. I've played a lot of video games and dealt with so much video game logic that it's just... Nothing makes any sense anymore. Why does this little boy down here... I paid homage to him. I want my god darn homage back, man. I mean, I see the chalice. And there's a chalice one up here. Can I sit in the chair? What can I do? Uh, what me do to get my homage back? Do I take crossbow outside? All I can say is, uh... You know, again, again... I played a lot of video games in the 80s and 90s, so I'm, I'm used to games not... I was, at a time, used to games not telling me stuff, though I feel like the finger hath been bendeth all the way back. Oh. I had no inclination or notion that leaving the Hall of Heroes would allow me to traverse to the next zone. Cemetery Hill? Now I think I remember the structure of this video game. It was not, like, like let me know if I'm bonkering my, my bones off here. It was not fully, fully, oh, like, it was not fully impressed upon me that that, that was like an end-of-level hub. I feel like it was, again, that's just kind of a PlayStation-style thing. Ooh, it's time to fight our way uphill. Looks like this is going to be an uphill battle. Oh, there's that evil sorcerer. So, even from the shackles of death, my old enemy pursues me. Pursueth, not pursues. Already my army has risen from the grave. I love that his name is Fortescue, not Fortesque. <laughs> oh man, Ghost Little ripped off my joke. My joke was, what is my mom doing in this game? <laughs> That's, uh, she's definitely my mom. Hey, boys! Get wasted! Crunch bag. Give me a little bit of that nightmare before my Christmas, bro. The thing I like about Nightmare Before Christmas is, is it a Halloween movie or is it a Christmas movie? Ah, uh, it's kind of both. Clever, huh? It's not the sort of thing you would expect. There's Hollywood, you'd expect them to make it one or the other to maximize the profits. And then it turns out, you make it both, you maximize the profits times two. Give me a little bit of that jazz. A little bit about that Django. It's not really very Django, it's, it's, it's got its own thing going on. It's kind of like Django on vacation is what it sounds like. Django in the tropics. What's up, punk? Do you all want to just think back to that one moment earlier, about two minutes ago, where I called the guy Crunch Bag after I hit him? I'm gonna crunch your bones, zombie freak. Oh, I guess this game's all about reading these books. Of great archaeological interest. Okay, destroy it. I'll bust this thing. No, no crossbow. I'm a boulder-busting individual with a sword as big as my will to hate geology. I was told to destroy a boulder. I'm Edward Scissorhandsing this stone shrub here. If I were a barber, my favorite movie would definitely be Edward Scissorhands. 
Because it's the only movie that really is about a barber. Oh. Woo! I thought I was just going to have myself a little dip in the old barbecue, and instead I was a shrimp on the barbie. And then the life bottle hath reviveth me. That's two boulders. That's, uh, one boulder. Hold on. That looks like a divot of a sort. I believe I have to, uh, precariously avoid these sort of, uh, sort of meatballs here. Oh, crikey. I got crikeyed into the crikey zone. Oh, Skeledad is dead once more. I don't know how to destroy these boulders. It's clearly not with a crossbow. That would not be the ideal way. Oh, wow, I, I walked through the fire just so I could see if I could still bleed. Crikey, I'm still on fire. That took a long time. I feel like bones don't burn quite that well. I've uh, spectated a crematorium before. Oh. Oh, the camera's, uh... I remember this sort of camera from the PS1 era. How me get up? There. How me get up? I want to read the book. Uh-huh. Crush my bones. Bones are all I got. Oh, a shield! Press and hold arm one to block. Okay, so arm one... Arm one is a button I refuse to press on a controller, so hang on. Okay. I've just mapped arm one to my right paddle on my scuff vantage controller. I'm crunching these things. And I've hidden there. And I've hidden Oh, Kryko! Daddy's shield is broken? Daddy's bones are gonna get bonkered now because of the broken shield. Oh, you can kind of wiggle the geometry a little bit. <gasps> Daddy's bones are broken. Daddy's bonker bucket's overloaded. Overload, nice and cold. Oh, crikey. Please give me shield. Please give me item I need. Okay. Let's get Skeleton Bonkers now. You might want to recover, to recuperate from your excavation of that god darn treasure bonk. Oh, my skeleton is struggling at vocalizing his anger. I'm a skeleton, that doesn't mean I can't be upset about it. A little bit of a rotational finesse. Oh! Oh, daddy's gonna die. He's gonna die like he was born to do. Oh my god. This is, uh... This is a struggle, I will admit- WHAT?! I got my brain handed to me from behind. I got opened up, and I wasn't on no operating table. Let me get back in there. We're going to get in there. The hilltop of Mausoleum waits atop Cemetery Hill. It's a rocky road, but exercise would do those old bones some good. Daddy's bones are broken. I have nothing else in the world to stand for, to live for, to look for. Or to long for, so I will get to the top of this hill. What is my mom doing in this game? Oh, punk? I need my strength, I need my health. I need my shield, I need my sword. Yeah, I like the aiming system where my little, little wisp indicates my aiming. It's lock on without having to click an analog stick. Quite inventive and bold. But not as bold as this. Rock. 
which is Boulder. Okay, so... There's a little bit of floppiness that I can sort of negotiate. Oh, the, the god darn molten boulder, or molder as I would call it, falls into the divot. Whereas the others, quite frankly, do not. Meaning traversal is uh, elegantly possible if one ignores the regular rocks when faced with the presence of a saving divot. Building up my pro tip catalog here. One can traverse with inclination to do so. I see a red boulder. Uh, I get hit with the regular one. Uh, the red boulder didn't fall into the little divot. So in other words, I don't really understand the logic in so much as it exists. I get hit. Uh, I don't have the shield. I use the life bottle. I have a shield. This is god darn esports right here. No, it did not fall down. Sometimes they fall down only if it's big enough. I use the shield. I get hit. Is it going to fall? It's going to crush me. It's going to knock me back about 1,800 paces. I feel like I have a better chance at becoming competitive at Street Fighter than I do in getting up this hill. I did it. Yeah, you failed the master, but just barely. You could have failed him faster, let me tell you. I'm going to go ahead and uh, pick up this box. I'm going to absorb its contents by walking through it, causing it to shatter. I'm going to step into the life stream, allow myself to drink up some ethereal energy. It takes time to warm me up to heat these bones. I'm going to bring these hot bones inside of this building. Hot bones! Who's got hot bones? You ever have hot bones? The doctor's like, that's weird, man. That's my attempt at some relatable humor. Let me know how that went. Because I don't know what to do in this world. Hilltop mausoleum. Haven't been in a hilltop mausoleum in years. I can't wait to finish the thing I'm working on now so that I don't have to think about it anymore. You know, you ever work on, you ever have like a project that you're not allowed to talk about, that you're working on and all you want to do is talk about it? You ever have that? You know what NDA stands for? It stands for narcs don't apply is what it stands for. Let me tell you. There's no worse feeling in the world than, well, there's a lot of bad feelings in the world. Let me tell you, I felt a couple of them. There's no worse feeling in the world than, you know, having signed an NDA that says you'll say nothing about no thing. And then the god darn people responsible for the thing are just out there bonkering out your scoops, making you want to just tweet at a guy with a million followers, you want to make this thing for me? Open that door. I got a club. Oh, Captain Caveman. Heck your church. Heck your church, bro. Destructible environments. You know what game had good destruction in it? it was Afro Samurai. Did anybody play that? Good game. Real good game. I mean, it was, it was, it was decent. It, it was a good game. Whatever. Metal Gear Rising Revenge stole the, uh, didn't steal, but that, that chopping technology. It was so sweet, it was practically hot. I'm going to jump in the grave. I already have one foot in there. I might, as, <laughs> might as well take the old plunge with both. Uh, can I read a book or not? H.O.P. International House of Pain. Give me that hop. Below this very hall. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, that's it. That's all you got? Secret catacombs? Evil doings? Okay. I feel like I gotta put my feet in every grave. That one's glowing with a particular ostentatiousness. 
Heck your grave. Oh! Daddy's bingo is broken, and so also is the stone lid of the sarcophagus leading down, down, down to the dungeon of his salvation. Watch out for sticky fingered imps. Oh, a tip that applies in real life as well. <laughs> well let me tell you, I'm talking about I'm talking about my brother's children. Am I am I right? Someone's asking if I read the chat. Of course, I read the chat. I can't. I can't address all of the chat at every single second. I'm sorry. It's just when the game is such nonstop action. Here's what I think about your church. Oh! All right, you sticky-fingered imps. I'm going to switch to a weapon that is more... Uh... Oh, no, don't you dare be sticky-fingered around me, you dumb imps. I like that my wisp is keeping my reticle alive. Someone is asking what is my favorite Pokemon. I don't know. Because I refuse to acknowledge those Pokemon. No, I'm just kidding. I love Pokemons. I don't really have a favorite Pokemon because uh, I refuse to choose just one. Ash chose Pikachu. I think that was some sort of act of just kind of tantamount to something pathological within him that he was able to choose just one Pokemon. I think it displays a, a, a lack of emotional flexibility. Can't jump over those spikes again. Old boy, bone boy's got low hops. He's a hop challenged bone boy. Oh wait, you mean, you mean favorite Pokemon game? I thought you meant Pokemon creature. I've been referring to my, my dog. I have a dog now, everybody. I've been referring to my dog constantly as Creature. I say, here, Creature. Oh, well, which Pokemon game do I like the most? I like gold. Particularly heart gold. Not to be confused with soul silver. I like gold because it felt like an amalgamation of such many things. However, Pokemon Black and White have a graphical style that is very sweet. And I feel like is uh, due for some kind of assessment as a... For sticky fingered imps. These thieves will strip you down to... Okay, I, I thought maybe you would have a hint what was helpful. I feel like Pokemon Black and White is going... Is, is like due for a renaissantial re-assessment uh, of a sort. Can I walk between these spikes? Oh! Okay, maybe not. That actually... Uh, my dude, did you see my dude creeping? He was tiptoeing. He was slipper stepping. He was soft chewing over there. And then that thing just got darn screamed at him like a bag of Doritos getting stepped on by a dump truck. I guess I need my sword. Where is my sword? Heck, where's my sword? Oh, dude, I can run with the, uh... With the D-pad. I didn't realize that. That's sweet. I don't know how to get in there. Me no can figure out. This is what happens if you tap the D-pad. Yeah, I know triangle switches me to the goddamn crossbow, man. Not to the sword. Sword's gone, as far as I know. See? No. I'm just going to go hit everything until something opens up. Oh, there it is. Give me that sword. I'm sorry, I just kind of thought... Oh yeah, they just straight up break. This is some serious Bioshock level design. Game design, I mean. Open the inventory, friend. Oh, the club really brainifies and bludgeons these little tiny weirdos, doesn't it? 
You gotta use the touchpad. America's favorite select button now. Crikey. Give me the... Got a life bottle. I got a life bottle, you sticky-fingered imp. What did you ever do? Oh, the, the god darn house is a-rockin'. Is that enough? Are you done? Alright, give me a little bit of that the Danny Elfman stuff. I'm here to give Guff and take Danny Elfman stuff. Moon Rune needed. Oh, we'll get back to you in, in a second. I like playing this game. It's taking me in a time machine. What do you got? Earth Rune? Yeah, give me that stuff. Oh, I'm going to kill you with a piece of wood. Because I hate you too much to use my steel. No, you sticky-fingered imp! He took my club. Recovered my cross B. Did not recover my... Daddy no got club back. Uh, very angry, very mad. A Chow's rune? I don't even know what that is. What say you, book? The stained glass demon is the master of the mausoleum. All right. The wretched soul lies... Ah, uh, we all got wretched souls, lady. Think you can impress me? I'm talking about a wretched soul. You know what? You don't deserve my steel. I'll shoot you with my crossbow bolts. Then heal myself in your green shower. A door with teeth does not bode well. Then again, what about a god darn mausoleum on top of a hill bodes well? Got my chow. Read this. What's up? Phantom longs to play a new tune, but he seems doomed to repeat the same cause of despair over and over. Oh, is that my buddy McCune? Mike, Micah, is this, is this, uh, I'm just, I'm just kidding. McCune. Delicious McCune. That's a joke about metal, is what that is. I'm going to tell you what, for a while in my life... I thought that the sticky-fingered imp would hawk his wares to this guy. I don't want to give him the satisfaction. Uh, I just tried to walk into the side of the door. I'm having an eyeball nightmare today. I'm sorry. My eyes just don't feel right. Give me that chest. Give me that club. Join the club, pal. Uh, jump me down a hole. Me fall down hole. Now let's go this way. Show me who you know. Show me what you got. Wait, wrong way. Yeah, I'm a weird fellow. Carrying a club, strutting with my bones out. What of it? Come here. Die. Helpless freak. Suffer upon the yonder marble floor, idiot minion. Whatever's in the box, I want it. Those chumps got brained. And this game, it was, it was a very impressive game on that. Beautiful. Oh, me done fall. Yet somehow, me live. Used life bottle. Really didn't, uh... I really didn't earn that death. That was not a good death. I'm sorry. Anyway, yeah, I like this, uh... I like this game. It brings me back to the old PlayStation days. You know, because, I mean, it's from the old PlayStation days. You want to talk about games that were good on the PlayStation, you gotta talk about. It behooves one dimension. Spyro the Dragon. 
had that wonderful sort of truck mode, you know, where he runs. He's got a good sprint on him. Just good, solid, clean fun. Medieval had a, a similarity or two abounding within it. God, I'm just touching the spikes while I'm trying to crush them. It's just, it's a breezy game in the spirit of Crash Bandicoot. Crash Bandicoot Spyro the Dragon, later to become God Darn, Ratchet and Clank, Jack and Daxter, Uncharted. Now we've got The Last of Us, Days Gone. We used to have these, these cartoony visions. And we used to think that this is what a AAA game would look like, that they would be these 4K. We didn't know what 4K was back then. We hardly knew what HD was back when this game came out. We we had CRTs, which are still better than LCDs these days. Kaboom. We, we just kind of imagined that we'd be playing games like this pretty much forever, that we'd be up to, like, Jack 16 by now. And uh, we're not, and we don't. Though I just remember thinking these sort of cartoony games were just going to kind of own the roost for a while. And the PlayStation games, uh, Jack and Dax, ja not Jack and Daxter, uh, Crash Bandicoot, Spyro the Dragon, Medieval, whatnot. They owned themselves in the fact that they, they had this confidence. They exuded a confidence, each of them. They didn't reach as far for superstardom as such games as Super Mario 64 or, hey, I wanted to talk to the organ master. They didn't reach for superstardom in such a way as Metal Us, uh, like Super Mario 64, or Legend of Zelda: Ocarina of Time did, or much less, you know, Metal Gear Solid. They they didn't they didn't reach for that sort of stuff. They just these were old-fashioned 1990s Super Nintendo games. These were just 16-bit games brought into the present day. This is just the 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 then present day. These were just like the ethos of a Genesis game. Ooh. No can target. I feel like if you're going uh, fighting glass, you might as well use wood. That's his dumb heart. I want you to fight me. I love bosses. I hope I don't die. And I hope if I do die, I still have a life bottle left. I do have a life bottle left. I really... Oh, wait, what? No! Crikey, mate! Now it becomes the old game. Oh, just waiting. Anyway, yeah, games like this later gave rise to Jack and... Jack and Dak and such. Which then just became Uncharted. I don't want to say AAA uh, exudes any kind of a sameness that it ever has. No, I mean, maybe it always has. It's just for a while, I liked when this was the sameness. PlayStation had had its weird adolescence of every game was like, it's like Nintendo game franchise with, you know, for grown-ups, where for grown-ups meant with serial killers. It's like Mario Kart with serial killers. It's like, oh, okay. Is that something anybody wanted? We did not yet possess the gifs and memes to express nobody asked for this. Much less the internet upon which to express such copy-pasted sentiments. So when finally the PlayStation started popping out several cartoon alternatives to the... Again, we did not even have the word try hard or edge lord. I can't believe I'm letting myself get turned into a rube by this individual. Me died. Me died again. Everyone's looking at people in the chat who don't like it. We really need to get over uh, the, the stupid little, again, I, I like to use the word copy-pasted, the, the stupid little copy-pasted fight argument that people have about the pronunciation of G-I-F. Very first time I ever heard it, it was pronounced GIF. Uh, and that was all the way back in 1996. It was pronounced GIF by a guy who was studying computer science. And, I mean, how do you pronounce giraffe, for example, right? 
English is stupid, man. Deal with it. It's like another thing I get tired of. It's the god darn year 2019. If I say football, I don't need a British person to be like, oh, you mean American football. Like, I'm an American person talking with an accent like this, and I say football. God darn deal with it, man. Like, like it's, it is the cheesiest, stupidest, lamest thing for a person to uh, try to make a joke about. To try to call, like, American football real football. You know what I'm talking about. To try to call American football fake football and uh, British soccer real football. It's like, whatever. Football's football, no matter where you're from, no matter how you're playing it, no matter what the ball looks like. I say GIFs because that's what I've always god darn said. And I'm going to stick to my guns and I expect you to stick to your god darn guns. Because if your guns ain't coming out of the gun factory with glue all over them, I don't see the point. You don't deserve your guns if you're not sticking to them. You punks. Anyway, I point to the word giraffe. You spell giraffe with a J, you freak. Do you? Huh? English has letters that can be pronounced different ways at different times and different words. And also, who really cares how it's pronounced? Where's the punk? I'm gonna stand here and flail at you, yonder punk. Oh, uh, hold on. You're about to get clubbed. Join the club. My friend had a club, you know, the club, which it was a car theft deterrent uh, device that you used to prop up your steering wheel. This time I will not die to the floor being collapsing. I will not die by the doing of a god darned inanimate object as mundane as a floor. Oh, that's some bars. Wait, oh wait, that, I don't, Mino have correct rune. No, I do, never mind. Kryko. Don't you dare steal my sword. Fiendish gremlin. Die some more. Give me money, lots of gold. Break my bones and leave me cold. Gremlins die beyond my sword. Gremlins scream forevermore. So I need the Chaos Rune to get in there. I'm sorry, I forgot to pronounce it Chow's Rune. I need the Chow's Rune. Hey, I hate you individuals. Don't you dare take my sword, you freak minion! Fiendish minion, freakish fool. Die right now, give back my tool. Now I drink from Fountain Green. Now I see a stained glass scene. Now I take a sweet moon rune. Medusa floor. Die quite soon. Come in here and take the chows. Nice life bottle energy vial. I ended up, unfortunately, not rhyming that one. We've broken the rhyme streak. Let's see what, uh... Oh, I'm back at the top of Detroit. Uh, me fall back down the glowing hole. Now is the time to not die here. Sir Dan... Daniel David. The chalice can now be claimed. I'm a hall of heroes loving sort of individual. I missed that sheet music. The floor is collapsing. I love my little animated pinky waypoint thing that's flashing and fluttering on the screen and telling me what direction is the one to go to achieve my tasty. Hand me whatever's tasty. 
This time I will not touch the spikes as I slash. I will solve the puzzle in a flash. Give me whatever that big thing is. Now I have a shield. One must remember, f and frequently, what one can do in a video game such as this. You know what other game was pretty good on the PlayStation that I thought was going to indicate the sorts of games that we were going to have more of in the future on the PlayStation 2, and we sort of did, and then up until a point where we didn't, was Blasto. Who played Blasto? Blasto was a pretty chill game. It had Phil Hartman in it. I liked Blasto. Blasto was, again, a god darn... That was a god darn, like, a Super Nintendo game on the... on the PlayStation. That had good graphics, man. It had good technical art direction, I would say. Achieving maximum distance in my criticism style there. To commend something so otherwise mundane and undersung as technical art direction. I'm gonna touch the rainbow spot and then remember a shield I've got. Maybe I can block some beams. We can skip this cutscenes. Okay, hold on. Put my crossbow in the slot. Kill him fast. His death I've got to make happen. He has 500 HP. Hit points or horse points as I call them. I'm going to shoot your heart. Wait, or am I not? It no shoot. The fiend's red heart. I no shoot him. I'm going to stop trying to rhyme. Yeah? Wait, oh, I can't block. Wait, oh, sorry, it's the wrong... I'm sorry, I was using the... Oh, I'm stopped. I'm frozen on the spot. I took off 100 HP of him. That's good. This guy's just shuffling like a god darn gremlin. He's doing a weird gremlin shuffle. Sticky fingered imp. Why don't you hover and let me blast your heart? I hammer the button. Is that a ma it feels like a mandatory hit that I've got to take there. Drink the medicine, drink the wine. Kill this fiend. It's about time. I really hate myself for the, the, the rhyming thing. I feel like I'm going to accidentally drop the needle somewhere on the YouTube upload of this stream and be like, why was I doing that? And then I'm going to yell at myself to sleep at night. Do you ever yell yourself to sleep? Stand in front of the mirror and just scream about your inconsistencies and fallibilities until you find yourself unconscious or at least waking from such a state on the bathroom floor? You stained glass demon. Why'd you have to get that glass dirty? That was a demonic thing of you to do with your 19 hit points left. I'm gonna crossbow the garbage out of your weird glass heart. Jump into the sky and hover there, fool. Your jumping impresses me not. Now you've died. Kaboom. You just got your bingo called out, shouted out. You just got bingoed, you fiendish demon freak. We did it, everybody. And now, I take the key. The skull key. If you're gonna have a key to anything, it might as well be a skull. I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna give McCune some inventory. Here's your sheet music, buddy. Give me some rock and roll. Ooh, a, that's a big old gulp right in there. Give me that big gulp. I love that Hall of Heroes. You'd be a fool to miss out on the Hall of Heroes at the end of a level of medieval. And we jump through the glass and... Did I die? I looked like I died. Oh, the Hall of Heroes. 
Well, we've done it, everyone. We've played a little bit of Medieval on the old PlayStation 4 on the Pro. Uh, it's in 4K. It's got some HDR. Uh, heated up my bones. I'm going to go to bed tonight with hot bones. I'm going to need to uh, confront an osteoporosis specialist, specialist uh, about the heat in my bones and ask if it's going to diminish my calcium. See the ghostly statue of your fraudster self? Don't tell me about no fraudster ghosts. A true hero you will be. Okay, you make me a fraud. Can I defraud myself even further? Is that an option? You want homage? You're not getting homage. I got two chow ices. I'll give you a little homage. It's it's okay. I knew it would take more than the army of the evil dead to throw. Evil Dead, is that a reference to Evil Dead? Find out next time. Give it to you freely, though I have no idea what it is. This is the kind of chill game that if I were a streamer, like a professional streamer. Oh, I now have three life bottles total. If I were like a professional streamer, this is the kind of game that I would, I would, literally, I would play all the way through this game on my stream, and I would do it for you, the viewer. I would do it for whatever individual possesses a sick enough thirst to fill their eyeballs, to drink, drink their eyeballs viscous, turgid, full of this sort of a game. 60 frames per second. Alas, I cannot stream in my home because I do not have adequate internet. So I can only stream here in the Goblin Bunker, a.k.a. the House of Pain. At any rate, everyone, I'm going to go ahead and let you all go because I have other things to attend to. What things are those things, you're probably asking. Well, uh, for one thing, none of your goddamn business. And uh, you might never know what it is I'm working on. You might never, you might literally never know. Because whatever it is, I can't tell you anything about it. And if you wanted to watch this again on YouTube, you could. It'll be up there in a little bit. And if you uh, didn't watch this at all, uh, you're not hearing me right now. And if you're uh, watching this on the YouTube, that's good. Leave a comment, because I usually I, the only comments I get are from freaks or idiots calling me uh, names which just flagrantly do not apply. This is Medieval on the PlayStation 4. Check it out if you want good, good old, good old fashioned video gaminess. Another ocean, Mike Micah, if you're listening, give us Blasto again. Nah, don't bring Blasto back. Can we have a... Seriously. So I'm going to leave you all with this. And I, I hate to... Hate to do something so much as ask a gift horse for another mouth. Though... Sony, can we please just get a goddamn 4K 60fps jack collection? I don't care that the PS2 games are PS2 classics I can purchase on my... On my god darn PlayStation 4. I want this. I want a new version of the game that runs at 60 FPS. I want all three of them in one download package. I would pay $80 for it. Call up Mike Micah at Other Ocean and tell him you want it. He will do it by himself for just $10 million. And if you want to involve any of the other members of his crew, $10 million each. So that is how it goes. And it's like, just you put it on the PS4, I don't care, and then the PlayStation 5 comes out, what? It's going to be more 4K and more 60 FPS on the PS5? Get out of town. Just release it on the PS4, and then when it's on the PS5, say, oh, the HDR is better. It's PS5 enhanced. Use it as a poster baby, flag flapper of the concept that the PS5 is, is, is backward compatible to PS4, or that PS4 games are, 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 are forward compatible. You get The Last of Us 2 has been delayed. Maybe I'll just play The Last of Us 2 on the goddamn PS5. Maybe I'll just wait for the PS5 to play that game. I don't know. Right? 
Ghost of Tsushima. That's probably not coming out to the PS5, right? So, you know, whatever. I'll just play them all on the PS5 with the better graphics. And uh, everything will be 60 FPS. Bloodborne's going to finally be... Bloodborne's going to crack double digits finally on the PS5. I'm holding out hope. We're going to get at least like 18 FPS out of that game. You know what else I really want? I would like like a Dark Souls game that has like this sort of cartoon aesthetic to it. Look at these 60 frames per second. You're a freak and a child if you don't like 60 FPS over any other number of FPS. Simple geometry, tasteful cartoonism, smooth, smooth, buttery camera. That's all I like, that's all I need. You're a fool and a child if you say or settle for anything less. And that's not who's welcome in the goblin bunker. You sticky-fingered little imps. At any rate, that's all I've got for today. I'm now going to go put myself back into the pain of an arduous task. Will I die in the doing of said task? Who knows? I was born stupid, however. I will not die hungry. Video games forever. Kotaku.com Kotaku.com KotakoBell.combo number three Combo number five Goodbye.